It's December 2082, just after Christmas. Charleston, which had survived the Great War, found something it could not survive. We lost almost everything. Our homes, our supplies, and most of our friends and family. The days and weeks that followed were the hardest of my life, but somehow we held together. We kept the idea of the responders alive, even though there were only a handful of us left. That's the story of the Christmas flood. Tell your children. Tell everyone you meet. Let's keep the memory alive for as long as we can. This flood was not natural, but man-made. Made by a man mistaken in grief in a way that would doom the one whom he loved. But how did it come to this? I'm Layman's Rain, and this is Fallout History. This month, we cover the Christmas flood. Let's wind back the clock to before the start of a war, in an earlier time, with a romance. David Thorpe was an executive at Arctos Pharma. Foreshadowing his later role as a leader of the Cutthroats, he was known for a cutthroat negotiation style. I'll be the one who says when it's time to negotiate here. And our partners are only impatient because they need this deal more than us. They just hope we don't realize it. Now, go back to your desks and figure out how to get me that 80%. Or I'll find someone else who can. Although David had a wife named Rita and an unknown number of children, as CD executives tend to do in the movies and TV, he had a mistress on the side. But unlike those, this mistress was one he was madly in love with, perhaps as much, if not more, than his wife. While others prepared for the Great War, they prepared for a break to the mountains. Hey, turn it off, Rose. Do you want my wife to find out about this? Aw, oh, come on. I want to make a recording of us. See if we're going to ditch that old hag when we get back anyway. <laughs> Fine. But it goes with you when we leave, and you need to promise to destroy it if word ever gets out about us. I have too much to lose in a divorce, and leaving evidence like that laying around will only make it worse. Oh, don't be an old stick in the mud. No one's going to find out. Pinky swear. Rosalind Jeffries, also known as Rose, was the object of his desires. There, trapped with limited resources as the world around them crumbled, they and other survivors quickly formed into a raider gang. This gang would come to be known as the Cutthroats. Their first leader, Harland, would not be enough of a cutthroat for David's tastes. When help finally reached the top of the world from the responders, David responded with violence. You saw what he did, Margie. He killed those innocent people who came to help us. He killed them in cold blood. And for what? A few measly supplies. The Cutthroats put David on trial for this murder, but rather than convict him, the gang split in two. Those that followed Harlan became the diehards, who would avoid violence when they could. The Cutthroats, now under the leadership of David and spurred on by Rose, continued their path of wanton violence. Rose would celebrate by gifting David an inscribed trophy. Their relationship continued until December 2082. Seeking a present for her beau, Rosalind and a number of raiders led a small raid on Charleston, However, she was injured and captured by the responders in the city. In true cutthroat style, she attempted intimidation to get out of this predicament. David's going to come for me, and when he does, he's going to be mad. He'll kill every last one of you if he has to. So here's how it's going to be. You're going to let me walk right out of the cell. You'll send me off with, my, with a big bag of Christmas goodies to take home to my David, and maybe we'll forget this ever happened. Rather than being intimidated, Charleston authorities saw an opportunity to finally catch the leader of the cutthroats. Word was sent up to the top of the world. Somehow, David got the wrong end of the stick and believed that Rosalind was dead. As such, he decided to enact his revenge. A mini-nuke, stolen from the Brotherhood, was detonated on Summersville Dam, upstream from Charleston. A massive flood ensued, wiping out much of the city. Rose, too, would be lost in the attack. This, however, would not be enough to satisfy his grief. First, David would build a shrine, and then he would reprogram a Miss Nanny with the personality of his lost love. Much like the real Rose, this AI would share Rose's passion for David. Leadership skills, charisma, David was a full package, really. Not to mention a whole lot of tall, dark, and handsome. This robotic Rose would outlast David, however, as he fell to the Scorched Plague a decade after his mad act of passion at the Summersville Dam on December 24th, 2082. 